Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Kavre, a couple that loves to play board games. All of them. Most of them. <laughs> oh. Well, today we are celebrating 3,000 subscribers. Wow. Thank you so much to everybody who has decided to stick around. Yeah, thanks for following along our journey. I can't believe it's been two and a half years since we started. Mm -hmm. We were just in our little apartment, moving things around a ton to try to film some stuff. Yeah, and now our collection has grown and we decided what better way to start off this great feat, but by sharing our collections and maybe some of the recommendations that we would give based on what we own right now. So we recently did an alphabet challenge where we went through every letter and chose a game up for every letter. Mm -hmm. And I found it very hard. And <laughs> there's games that I wish I'm like, oh, I wish I would have chosen this. So yeah. we thought we'd do an extended version of that. And today mm -hmm. share 10 games that start with A that we enjoy that maybe you should check out. Yes, and it's very fitting because it's April. It feels like it's a fresh start. There's just like, they all start with A's, so A's A for, for April. April. <laughs> so in no particular order, here we go. Let's jump into our A games. Do you wanna start? Sure, I'm gonna start with the, uh, the famous t tin can of Abandon All Artichokes. And this game is Abandon All Artichokes. Essentially what you're trying to do is it's a, a card filter deck and you wanna, or card filter game where you want to empty your deck of all artichokes and there's a bunch of different other uh, vegetables that will give you a variety of different abilities you'll use them throughout the game to either uh, fumble with your own deck or fumble around with other people's decks uh, and really just work your way towards emptying your deck of artichokes it's a blast to play super quick is one of those games where it's like you read the card and you know what you're doing now and because of that, it flows really easily, it's easy to teach, and it's easy to just play again and again and again. The illustrations are very cute. They're it's like, adorable. They're little vegetables they are just living their best life. Mm -hmm. I've never had an artichoke. Oh, artichokes are great. Like artichoke How do you hearts. eat them? I don't, there's a lot of ways you could eat them. Cause they're so big. No, you can get like the little ones that are almost like Brussels sprouts, Brussels sprouts. type things. No, I've always seen and them be yeah, like Yeah, you can big. cut them up, but they're really yummy. I, When's I'm the last sure time you, you had, had one? Them. Had them in a pasta? In a pasta? Yeah, artichoke hearts in a pasta. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And that's Abandon All Artichokes. Now my first game is going to be the infamous. I'm sure we, you've heard us talk about this game plenty Paul of Colin. times. <laughs> so this is a two player only game. It's actually our collective favorite two player only game. It sure is. Where you're essentially placing tiles and trying to create either a set of gr uh, the animals mm -hmm. or the sea creatures or colors. But before you place your own tile, you move your opponent's tiles. So it's a very much well, move, move and place. The tiles. Not, yeah, not your opponent, sharing. any yeah. tile. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you move and you try to create groups and it's very sneaky because you think you've got it. You think all your octopuses are together. You're having a grand slam of points. And then no, one gets moved away. Everything gets broken. Tyler decides to put a crab in there. Game over. Game over. But it's really fun. It's always really close. And I feel like I can never get bored of this game. I'm always down to play Aqualine. Yeah, it's a pretty good head-to-head -head game. If you're looking for a two-player game, this is the one we usually recommend. So check yeah. it out. Mm -hmm. All right, the next one we want to talk about is Acropolis. I'm always afraid I'm going to say this game's name wrong, but then I say it and I, I get it. You did it. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> I did it. So this is a city builder uh, tile drafter where you're basically going to be, well, deciding whether or not you're going to stack the tiles that you draft onto your uh, newly built city or if you're just going to expand outwards. And there's a variety of different colors that are going on uh, or building types, I should say, uh, that will score you points based on specific rules. And the cool thing is, is like you can go through this, draft these tiles strategically to focus on like a few buildings, but the higher you go up in tiers, the more points you're able to score yourself. And then also the multipliers that you get through the draft are very important to grab too. So it works out in everybody's favor most of the time. And it's just a quick little draft city builder that's a lot of fun. Reminds me a little bit of King Domino. So it's like the area times the multipliers, because mm -hmm. if you don't have enough multipliers, then it's not worth as much. Yeah. So it's kind of balancing how you get the both goods to multiply. 
Yeah. yeah, and you don't want to keep, like, you don't want to, I mean, I guess you could, there's probably a strategy where you can build every type of building, but uh, it is very important to really hone in on one particular one so you can get a big multiplier because that feels amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Acropolis. The one I want to talk about next is Ahoy. Ahoy. Which is how pirates say hello. Ahoy. Ahoy there, matey. So in this game, you are either taking a role of a mollusk, a shark, or some smugglers. And each of you has your own various objective of how to play. Mm -hmm. Similar to other leader games like Root and Oath, there's asymmetric characters that you can play with different goals then track together in a very unique way mm -hmm. but here you're sailing on the sea you're transporting good you're discovering new islands it feels very thematic as the map grows the yeah. table becomes more beautiful and the little ships are just wonderful um, i really enjoy this game i think we played a fair bit of times now and i really enjoy the mollusk union because you're just a little snails trying to get back up there and take control of the world yeah, I think those are the only people I haven't played. You play the smugglers yeah, and the I was sharks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bluefin shark, the bluefin, mm -hmm. yeah, they're really fun to play. You just get like this cool army of sharks, essentially. Um, and it builds up all your stuff, but it is a lot of fun. It's like area control meets like set collection meets uh, like crew building and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It's, it's a lot in one, but it runs really smoothly. Definitely. And that is Ahoy. Wow. On to what I consider a classic, and that would be Azul, who doesn't love a tile drafting pattern building game. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So essentially in this game, you'll be doing exactly that. You're drafting tiles to fill up your board and make sure you can move your full set or a single from your full set all the way over into your little quilt type thing that you're going to be making. And it's amazing to see the strategy that goes into the decisions um, because the way that you draft ends up filling up the center of the draft pool, which gets a little bit more complicated and you can lose points and so on and so forth. But it is very, very fun to watch your points slowly progress uh, because the way that the game works is uh, different lines and the way that you collect points uh, really start to ramp up as you go through the game. And there's a point in the game where everybody is almost close to being able to end the game. It really just depends on who's going to take that leap, whether or not they think they're winning or close enough uh, to take the lead kind of thing. And I think that's always one of my favorite parts about the game. It's one of my favorites to show to people because mm -hmm. it's fairly easy to explain and it's the tactile feel of it's very nice. Yep. It's a very, you can tell it's a high quality game. And there's three other versions. Yeah, I can't that forget are, about that. <laughs> that are different that you can try. So if you like this game, there's like, opportunities for you to explore. And now there's a portable version coming out. Oh yeah. So it's very small, it's small it clicks version. in yeah. as well. So it's easy, easily portable. You can play on a plane, on a train, wherever you want to go, even on a beach. Plane, train, automobile, and a beach. And a beach. <laughs> Lovely Azul. Now, the big one I want to talk about is this beauty of a game. Ugh. Artisans of Splendid Vale. So this is a campaign story driven game that has combat in it as well. Yes. But generally you'll take one of the four characters mm -hmm. and you'll explore the world of our Artisans of Splendid Vale, the Splendid Vale itself. Now, what's really neat about this game is each character has an entire book that you will follow. And it's kind of like a choose your own adventure. You'll read passages, which will direct you to read other passages. You'll mark your days exploring, deciding where you want to go in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but every now and then there'll be a combat sequence. Yes. And the combat in this game is so clever and so different from what I've seen yeah, in really these like types it. of games. You essentially just have a dice pool and you use that dice pool for essentially everything. Everything. Offense, so, defense, yeah. everybody. It's like a collective dice pool, which is very cool. So sometimes I defend too much and then Tyler doesn't have enough dice to attack. So it's very, I love the take on it. The story is so wholesome. I don't think I've ever been this attached to characters. Like I, cool. I, I begin to develop a second personality because I'm like, I wonder what Herenia would do. Where would they go? I don't know. So we'll find out. Yeah, it's a cool little like, 
uh, RPG in that sense where it helps you learn and dive into the development of like those particular characters that you choose to play. I think it's neat to just base it off of one thing and then as you progress through the story be like wow this character is really cool mm -hmm. and then you read a passage that's specifically for them and you're like yep that makes sense or oh I didn't know that about them so then mm -hmm. you start to develop more and more um, connections between uh, you and the character. And each of the characters has a really unique method of crafting. Yeah. You can make clothes for other characters, you can make potions. There's a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. in this game and it's just very heart felt. Yes. Yeah. The pacing of the game is actually pretty sweet too because it is divided into days and the way that you go through your stories is very smooth. You don't have to ever worry about like uh, having to play for too long, at least from our experience. Mm -hmm. so. Very lovely. <laughs> Artisans. That's uh, six games already. <laughs> Wow, we're, we're, we're zooming. The next game that I want to talk about, I feel like might have been my A for the alphabet challenge. Ooh. Actually, I'm fairly confident it was. But it's Arctax, and this is the big box, so forgive me um, that you can't actually see like the, the fact name that it's of the game. How do we know? It uh, says on the side. Yes, yeah. And on every other side as well. Yes. yes. So, Architects is the first game of the West Kingdom trilogy uh, from Garfield Games. It, it falls into my favorite games realm, um, but it's a worker placement, uh, resource management game where you essentially just start placing workers to get resources and slowly that engine builds up faster and faster. You've got to try and manage building uh, cards that you have in your hand, building for the cathedral, and also maintaining your reputation because there is ways to fall down in reputation that sometimes has real good benefits early on, but you just got to make sure you uh, get back up there once you've, once you've decided to like stop paying taxes essentially. Uh, the game is relatively, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty heavy, um, I would say, so definitely play with caution if it's one of your first games that you're going to get into, but it is a very good introduction into the worker placement mechanic um, <laughs> and the little bit of engine building that goes on really sets you up well for, I think, the whole trilogy mm -hmm. um, if you're interested into looking more into it. I think this is also a really good introduction game to Garfield games. Yes. Because it's very fast paced. On your turn, you're going to place a worker. Mm -hmm. The complexity of it is that you have so many places you can place a worker. Mm -hmm. But once you place a worker, you get something back. And yeah. that's the whole trade mechanism for it. But a really fun aspect is you can send people to jail. Oh, yes. Yeah. So if there's, because the more workers you place in one spot, the more that you get. It's yeah. like a cumulative resources. So if Tyler all of a sudden has six people and he's getting three gold, that's a lot of gold. That you don't want to let him do that. So I'm going to pay a gold and send six people to the jail. Yes. Yeah. And then I get coins for that because I'm, you know, controlling the citizens, making sure they behave. Exactly. Yeah. You want to be the best architect out there, but also like manage what's going on in the mm -hmm. city. <laughs> be good yeah. or bad. And that is Architects. Now the next game I want to talk about is Above and Below. Below. So this game has a very special place in I think our hearts. Yeah, I would say so. Uh, it's one of our first kind of heavier games that we've dove into and I, I just remember early on when we were first discovering board games, we would play this almost daily. There were so many times we would play this and we'd always show this game to people, always introduce it to others. to get through this storybook. And the storybook is incredible yeah. here. But essentially what you're trying to do is you have workers and you'll designate those workers to usually create resources, build new things, get more workers and that traditional kind of worker piece. Or you can explore in the below. Yeah, you send them as like a crew to like challenge the mm -hmm. below depths. And you never really know what's gonna happen in the below. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll get the perfect resources you were looking for for a set collection piece. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you'll get something rare that'll get you way ahead or a new character that you can add yes. to your workers. Or your roles will be a complete done. Or, <laughs> yeah, you'll suffer some damage you might not do so well, your workers may become exhausted. So it's a really nice balance of, yes, I can work through this and try to get the resources and try to get the most points, or, do I want to be a little bit more fun and push your luck and, you know, pass the storybook, see what happens, have the person read to me. And it's very fun. It's very collective. And it just, it's an extremely well-designed game. I always love getting this to the table and it's been too long since it's been to the table, but 
I love it. It's a yeah. and below. There's definitely a lot going on in this book I or in this game. I really like the story. It's a mm -hmm. lot of fun to go through. And sometimes like at the detriment of my um, my score, I guess I would say, but it doesn't matter because like I've just enjoyed exploring the below of this game that mm -hmm. I push that aside. I'm like, you know what? That was still fun because the experience is great. And uh, if you're like us, we will read the story uh, and we have to attach voices to everybody that we meet. Yeah, so definitely. that's always fun. Very many voices. <laughs> and that is above and below. Okay, this is the last game that I want to talk about and I feel like it just has to be mentioned. <laughs> it's called Arc Nova. And boy, is this a fun, grindy game. Essentially in this game, you're working towards creating a like a solid zoo and the way you're gonna do that is you're going to put animals into your zoo and actually build the enclosures but you're also going to want to research and uh, look into that conservation piece mm -hmm. so they've done a good job kind of mending those two uh, themes or I guess they're the same theme but those mm -hmm. ideas together um, just to make it uh, that much more better and essentially in this game what you're going to be doing is taking one of five actions each turn the game itself, when you look at the actions that need to be taken, are pretty straightforward. The complexity comes with the number, the numerous cards. There are so many different cards in this game. There are so many different strategies that can like lead you to one way. And it's very much one of these games where you have to like adapt on the fly, but also optimize as you go. And I think that that's a lot of fun. It brings out a lot of strategy in people and really gives people the opportunity to kind of like go in the direction that they feel is right. And I love that exploration aspect of this game. If you're familiar with Terraforming Mars, I think that this game has been compared to it quite often in the sense that there are so many different cards and you are kind of building this little engine to help yourself progress further and further as you go. Yeah. What's really cool about it too is the scoring. Yeah. Because you're trying to balance scoring on two different tracks because at the end of the game, when those two trackers intersect, it's the difference between the two is what your score will be. Mm -hmm. So it takes a very balanced approach because you don't want to really yeah. go in into one way. You have to really weigh in and how can you create a strategy that benefits you from multiple perspectives and where can you really put your emphasis on to maximize the points that you're going to score. Yeah, exactly. So the games end up being like, pretty close to, well, I don't want to say pretty close to zero, but the games, although they take a long time, mm -hmm. your score is going to really depend on that difference. So sometimes you can score in the negatives, unfortunately, um, or you can score in like the high positives if you've got a really good engine going on Who knows? that ends your final turn fantastically. But Fantastic game. That is Arc Nova. Now the last game, on our list is this one, Almanac. Oh, there's two? Something is not right here. Interesting. Well, Almanac is a worker placement game that I feel should be talked about more. I'm surprised it's not. Yeah, because it's like a worker placement game within an adventure book. So the way the game is played is essentially you'll worker placement on a certain map. But then at the end of that round, you'll have an opportunity to travel to a new map. Mm -hmm. So you're really exploring as the game progresses and new maps will have various location specific worker placement spaces that you can put your workers to, yes. to take specific actions. And you're essentially just trying to build up as many points as you can by the end of the game, when you're at your last location, your last destination. And where you end up is completely up to you and your team and your table. Yes. Because you never quite know where you're gonna go in Almanac. Yeah, the great part about this game is like there's a bunch of different jumps that you can make from map to maps to map moving forward as you progress through the game. Um, I think it's very fun to watch yourself like make those decisions and then um, see what's on the next page. The game mm -hmm. kind of like evolves as you go and the best part about that is then you can go back again, play it, and then end up on completely different maps. Okay. So it's a whole new game. But in essence, it's still a worker placement. You're still trying to score as many points as you can. And it's just done very, very crisply that I think everybody would enjoy this game. 
And this is the first of the, there's two, one more out there. True. There's a dragon road and then the crystal caverns. I don't, I don't think it, that's right. It's crystal something. It's something crystal. Yeah. We'll think about it and yeah. maybe we'll remember. Or if not, we'll put we'll it right here. just put it up. Yeah. 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 But you might be wondering if we had two copies. Well, it's because we're going to do a giveaway of one of them. Yay, us. To celebrate hitting 3,000 subscribers, to thank you for all the time that you've really watched our videos and supported us. Mm -hmm. Now to enter our giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below, leaving a code word. And the code word is... Adventure. You can interweave it in any way you want, but make sure you leave that comment in there and you'll be entered for an entry to win this game. Check out the details down below in the description to find out more about it because mm -hmm. there might be some other things that we have not mentioned here, but that will give you everything. That you the need fine to. print. Exactly. Now, for our question of the day, it is, what A letter game do you like that maybe we haven't mentioned or do you really like one of the ones that we've mentioned? We asked our Patreons this question. Yes. And we have a couple answers for you. One of the games we didn't talk about was Android Netrunner. So Sean said, Android Netrunner, probably the first asymmetric games I played outside of hidden role games, a fun card game with a wild history. And I believe it's being reprinted now through like a third. I was just going to ask if it was going through a reprint. Yeah, it, it's very cool. So it's more accessible now okay. uh, because I think the original is out of print now, but there's a uh, big fan base that maintained it. Okay. So it's, I really want to play it. It's, oh, yeah, we don't have it. Really and good I've heard many good things yes. about it. So. And then Karen said, I love Alhambra. Love <sighs> using the four currency to buy the buildings and add to my Alh Alhambra. And also love how there's three scoring phases. Yeah, we also have, have a roll and write version. Yeah, we of play that the roll and write, but we, we have, have not played, played the big version. <laughs> and the roll and write is fantastic, so I can only imagine, or I hope, that uh, mm -hmm. the original is just as good. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button. Let us know in the comments down below which games resonated with you. Answer mm -hmm. a question of the day. And I guess we'll catch you on the flippity flop. Yeah, and don't forget to use that code word to enter our giveaway, and uh, we'll announce it sometime in the next month. We'll announce it in our next video when we cover B letter games, maybe. Is that what we're gonna do? Maybe, we'll find out. Wow. Well, stay tuned, and we will see you in the next one. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say bye. <laughs> I didn't say bye, oops. <laughs>